While working on some upcoming projects over the past couple of months, I've had the opportunity to fire pottery in my pit kiln a couple times, so I figured, while I'm at it, it's a good time to make a quick video about my pottery firing process from start to finish. I think people may be surprised by just how quick and simple the process is. The firing itself takes less than an hour and results in terracotta with the unique color and carbon patterns you only really see on a vessel fired in an open flame. To start, I'd like to talk for a moment about the pit kiln itself. I say kiln, whereas really this is just a hole. It's important it be a big enough hole to hold a campfire, but that's really all it is. This slanting shelf that leads into it is important for airflow, and also gives you a place to worm pottery before firing it. The pit is helpful for keeping in some of the heat of the fire and protecting the pottery from gusts of wind. Together, these two factors keep the temperature in the pit kiln much more stable and evenly distributed than in a regular campfire. This makes firing pottery easier and less risky, as rapid changes in temperature can sometimes shatter pottery. But I should say, you don't actually need a pit kiln at all, and some of the greatest potters of all time may do without a kiln. A regular campfire is really all you need to fire pottery to terracotta. In the past, I've used the technique I'm about to demonstrate to fire pottery not just in my pit kiln, but also in campfires, metal braziers or fire pits, and even in a domestic wood stove. For some cultures at certain points in history, firing pottery in domestic fires, literally the same ones food was cooked on, was actually typical. Now, let's get to the process itself. For open firing, you want to make sure to include some temper in your clay. This is the trick that will let you fire pottery in under an hour, without it breaking. Usually, I use around 10 to 25% temper by volume of dry clay. But the more you include, the more heat resistant your pottery will be, and the faster you'll be able to heat it up without it breaking. Temper is any powder that doesn't expand much when heated. This could be anything from grog, what we call ground up pots that have already been fired, or just regular sand, or my personal favorite, charcoal dust. Whatever you're using should be either mixed into dry clay powder or kneaded into a wet clay body. If you'd like to see my full process for making clay, I recently made a video about just that, which I'll link to below. Once we've made some pottery, I just let it sit till it's bone dry, and then bake it in the oven to drive off any residual moisture. There's a surprising amount of water in even bone dry clay that is trapped chemically in the so-called hydration state of the clay molecules. This chemical hydration can only be driven off at elevated temperatures, heating it at a bit above boiling like around 300 degrees Fahrenheit, is all that's really necessary. But I like to bring it all the way to 475 degrees Fahrenheit, or around 250 degrees Celsius, to ensure it's thoroughly dried. This is above the temperature organic matter starts to break down, so depending what's in your clay, it might start to smell a little burnt. Even just a little trapped moisture can destroy or damage pots during firing, so it's best to be as patient with the step as possible. Normally, I'll give it about half an hour to dry in the oven. Once dried, I take the pottery to my kiln and start a small fire. This small fire will heat up the walls of the kiln and help preheat our pottery. This can be quick, and I consider the stuff done as soon as most of the wood I first put in is burnt up and I have a nice bed of hot embers. If you don't want to dry your pottery in the oven, you can lengthen this step to perform the same drying roll as the oven. But in my personal experience, I've found that to be a little hit or miss, whereas the oven does the job every time. Once the preliminary fire has burnt down to hot coals, I make a nice spot in the middle and arrange my pottery there to be heated further by those embers. We want to try to increase the heat around the pots about as slowly as the fire will allow. Usually, after sitting a few minutes in the hot coals, I start building up a perimeter of small twigs and little pieces of wood to make a very small fire around the pottery. Once this fire is burning well, I start to build it up a little bigger. This is really the riskiest part of firing, as far as thermal shock is concerned. If your clay has only been lightly tempered, it's best to do this as slowly as you can. Whereas if you use a lot of temper, you can really let loose and throw your pots into a raging inferno, or whatever you want. Once we're satisfied, we can start building up a bonfire. 
The taller we make the fire, the hotter it's going to get down in the coals where the pots are. So we want to slowly build it up, as to not thermally shock the pots, but also, carefully, as to not drop any big sticks on them. I like to split my firewood into skinny splints. Not only are they light enough to not damage the pots if they fall, but the small size makes them burn faster and hotter, which gets us up to temperature with less wasted fuel. I also recommend using very dry wood. It burns better, but also won't pop or crackle as much. This is nice because the sound of pottery breaking is nearly identical to the sound of wet wood popping in a fire. So using dry wood can greatly reduce your risk of suffering from dozens of little heart attacks throughout the firing. Our goal, now that our fire is really going, is to get the pots deep in the fire glowing red like hot embers. To do this, we want a nice bed of coals around the pots. I keep building up the fire until I see the pots are surrounded by a pile of coals. The coals in the fire will burn hotter than the firewood itself and can more easily bring the pottery up to temperature. With the bed of coals looking good, I fan the flames to bring the coals to life. It won't take long to get the pots to incandesce with heat. Once we see the pots are glowing, we'll know we've done our job and can start letting the fire burn down. It's this cooling stage where the pottery is still hot, but not hot enough to burn off carbon that the pottery will develop carbon patterns based on where the remaining firewood and coals touch it. You can actually get all sorts of patterns by throwing on things like sawdust or leaves or hair or other organic matter at this stage. But I always like to see what happens naturally. The randomness of these patterns is one of my favorite parts of firing pottery this way. Once the fires burn down and the pots are exposed, we're basically done. You should be able to see a color difference than when we started. Because I'm using red clay, normally the pots that are still in the embers will be a sort of dull grayish brown color. This is because the carbon monoxide released by the hot coals has reduced the iron oxide in the clay back to iron metal. Once out of the fire, the atmospheric air will oxidize or rust that iron once again and the pots will change colors to become more orange or red as they cool. Because I'm using wild clay from soil, the exact color of my pots is always a bit of a mystery to me until after they're fully cooled, and I normally get a range of light yellows to reds based on the difference in mineral content. All in all, these two firings took me just around 35 minutes each from lighting the fire to letting it burn out. Overall, the firing went well and the pieces have a nice ring to them. Unfortunately, one of my pieces did crack. This will happen from time to time, but really cracking like this is somewhat rare. I've only had three pots critically fail in an open fire like this over the past two years. It was the only one in the batch to suffer any damage, and it cracked along a seam it was joined with, so I'd be willing to bet it was more my sloppy pottery technique than the firing itself that did it in. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll make sure to link to some other videos on open firing pottery from folks with much more experience than me. So if you're interested, make sure to check out the links below. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. Thanks again, and bye!